Robert, can I ask you, if you may, uh, to quote some hadiths or verses from the Quran that you find particularly reprehensible? Well, the Quran in chapter 98, verse 6, it says that the unbelievers from among the people of the books, that is, Jews and Christians who don't accept Islam, are the most vile of created beings. It says that the, uh, the polytheists are unclean in chapter 9, verse 28. It says in chapter 9, verse 29, to fight against even the people of the book, that is primarily Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya, which is a tax, with willing submission and feel themselves subdued, which has been the basis for the, uh, the institutionalized second-class status for non-Muslims under Islamic law. Okay. You have Muhammad in a hadith saying that you offer the, he says, I've been commanded to fight against people until they confess that there's no God but Allah, and I am his messenger. And when they do, their lives and their property will be safe. In other words, their lives and property are not safe if they don't okay. accept okay. that he is the messenger of Allah. And there are many, many others right. that okay. go on. Let's bring in uh, Imam Yunus Dadwala, who's an imam in East London. Uh, imam Dadwala, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. Um, you've heard Robert Spencer quote extensively from the Quran and the Hadith. Um, yes. How would you counter the words that he has just put out there? I think um, before we even go there, I think we, we just need to understand whether somebody like um, uh, Robert Spencer or Pamela Geller should be banned in com uh, coming to this country or whether their presence will be helpful or not. And I think that's the debate that we should be having. Um, there should be fairness in the application of any banning orders. If we ban one extremist on the basis of hate speech, um, on the basis of community cohesion, not being conducive to the good of the pub, uh, of the country or to the good of the public, then you know it's a, the Home Secretary needs to decide whether uh, they should allow Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer to come to this country, and especially on Armed, armed Forces Day. I mean, is it going to be uh, helpful? For these individuals, is it going to be respectful for these individuals, or is it going to be distasteful uh, for these individuals to come and honour the memory of Drummond Lee Rigby? Right, but, but what is what is reality. what is what is the the issue here as well, Imam Dadwala? It's, it's, it's the generalisation. Um, well, it's the well, it's, it's the it's the ability of people such as Tommy Robinson, such as yeah. Robert Spencer, to be able to quote from the Quran. But there are many verses in the Bible. There are many verses. No, in quite, quite. Text which can be easily taken out of context. And right. I think we well, don't have the time us here no, no. to debate. But Imam, Imam, Imam yeah. with all due respect, I'm sorry, but so often on this show, we are asked by our Muslim listeners, yeah. why haven't you got an Imam on to counter, theologically counter, yeah. some of the things that are put out there? Now, you can't, unfortunately, come onto this show and evade that. You, we, have to, we have to take this straight because the failure to be able to do that, to counter yeah. that, is part of the problem which allows the EDL to jump in and make up its own mind about Muslims. So uh, as an imam talking yeah. to Robert Spencer, and Robert Spencer has had yeah. plenty of discussions with imams over the years, haven't you, Robert? Yeah. Um, oh, yes, yeah, many. many. So can we have this discussion? Can, he's put the quotes out there, he said them. Now, as an imam, someone who has studied the Quran, back to front, inside out, please... Explain to us this context. Well, the context is, in this country, there are three million Muslims in the UK. Are they, they are following the Quran. I am following the Quran. Am I ordered by the Quran uh, from the verses that he has quoted, which were from the time of 1400 years ago, during uh, uh, a time of jihad, a time of uh, fighting non-Muslims at the time, are we ordered, because I follow the Quran fully, am I ordered to kill so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so who's walking down the street, whether they are a Jew or a Muslim? No, I am not, and nor does any Muslim have a right to kill anyone on the streets of Britain, on the streets of the United but, States. But are, are Jews else. and Christians inferior to Muslims? No, they are not. Every person is does valued. It, so, so it doesn't, it doesn't the say is. that in the Quran then? If it says that, it will be in a context. So, for example, if it says they are unclean, it means they're spiritually unclean. So how do we... Then, okay, so if they're spiritually unclean, then that's then assumed, does it not, that they are not the equal of Muslims? No, it's not about being equal. Every person has to be respected. 
and that's why we can't take a life. You've where, heard the verse being quoted. Where, where's the, the quote? Where's the quote in the Quran that says we are all equal? That Jews and Christians and Muslims are equal. Whoever takes a life, any life, whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim, it is like taking the life of every single human being. Quite, but there isn't anything in the Quran that you can identify which well, actually it's says not on the that. Top everyone... of my head, and I wasn't, I wasn't asked to be prepared for for. A well, you debate. are an imam. I, I, I understand that, but Robert Spencer has uh, been. Uh, but he's not an imam. Yeah, but he's been. Uh, this is his field, and he well, but is, Islam is your field, surely. Islam is my field, but I, I have not been called to discuss whether Robert Spencer and the verses of the Quran which he is quoting. I have been called to ask whether he should be allowed in to this country or not. Right, but as I pointed out, the reason that I wanted an imam on the show yeah. was to be able to counter the kind of accusations that we hear from people like Tommy Robinson and people like Robert Spencer but about it. Because the, the problem is, is that what, what, what the problem is, surely, Imam Dadwala, is that Muslims, a very small minority of Muslims, these jihadists that Robert Spencer speak of, they are not contextualizing these lines, are they? So, so they're well, feeling as though yeah, they've got the carte blanche. Yeah, and the 99% who are, are they not following the Quran? Well, the, the one they are. They the, are well, but the one percent might argue that they're not. No, but that's the one percent. There's always extremists in every single uh, community. Absolutely so you true. Can't, you cannot generalize the whole community based on their extremist views. Mm. Um, so if ninety-nine percent who are following the Quran, who are following Islam, are not uh, taking that verse as literal, then why is it that we should follow the one percent? Um, Robert. Please, please explain further how you coming to this country where views such as yours already exist and are articulated is doing anything to help bond us together and to learn to live with each other and to, I mean, I... I, I, I well, it's doing exactly that. Uh, we're, we're showing that there's an international coalition for freedom. And okay, but are you, are you also... Are mm, determined to defend human rights and equality of rights of all people before the law. And within your speech, is there any mention of the fact that the vast majority of Muslims are peaceful and we are not against Muslims, we are not against Islam, we are against extremism? Is there, is there anything in your speech to, to say That's to obvious each... from everything that we say and do. It's obvious to anyone who is fair-minded. It's obvious to anyone who's interested in truth and actually reads what we really say and listens to uh, what we really... Uh, put out at these rallies. The fact is that, like I said before, any Muslim who genuinely stands for human rights and rejects the idea of the death of the, the death penalty for the apostate and the, the, uh, the oppression of women, wife beating that is sanctioned in the Quran in chapter 4 verse 34 and so many other things, any Muslim who rejects those things and stands for the otherwise universally accepted notions of human rights, such as were delineated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of the United Nations of 1948, uh, very much invited to stand with us. Okay, Imam uh, Dadwala, do you want to come back at the accusation that wife beating is sanctioned in the Quran? Wife beating is not sanctioned in the Quran, and that's why I've spoken against wife beating. I always speak against wife beating. And I think what we've got to understand is, you know, Pamela Geller. Pamela Geller, she's uh, standing up for Israel. And, you know, she, her language is vile against Muslims. It's generalized against Muslims. And that's why on a recent visit to Canada, she was banned by a synagogue. A Jewish woman, a so-called defender of Israel, is banned from speaking at a synagogue. The Toronto Board of Rabbis denounces Pamela Geller uh, because of her visit to Canada. Why was she invited? And this is the Board of Deputies uh, of Rabbis in Canada. So, I mean, for Muslims to, to speak about uh, whether Pamela Geller or just question whether Pamela Geller is conducive, to the public good in this country, I think is, uh, you know, it's quite natural. Mm. But not Robert Spencer? Robert Spencer as well. I mean, you know, anyone who is trying to fuel hatred, we, we live in a society, a peaceful society. There are individuals who ca carry out acts of criminality. There are individuals who are extremists, but you can't generalize because of those criminals or those extremists and start demonizing a whole community. And those people who are, I mean, look who's calling these individuals. I think that, that answers a lot of questions. It's hateful people who are calling hateful individuals uh, to a rally. Robert? 
Uh, chapter 4, verse 34 of the Quran says, Good women are obedient. As for those that are not, give them a warning, send them to separate beds, and beat them. It's in there. Look it up. As far as uh, Pamela Geller getting banned in Canada goes, this is part of an international effort by leftists and Islamic supremacists to silence any voices that are standing up against jihad and Islamic supremacism. And actually, she was banned by the first synagogue there because a Muslim policeman threatened the uh, rabbi and told him that he would lose his job as a chaplain for the area if he let her speak. And that so is, you see, so all these things ridiculous. always go together. So what we have is a, an unwillingness to debate, an unwillingness to deal with the truth, an unwillingness to grapple with the hard issues that jihad raises and to come up with genuinely helpful solutions. Well, why aren't you, do, why aren't you doing an interfaith conference? The of Islam Robert, why aren't you... Rise to this. Why aren't you saying, I don't want to speak to the EDL because the EDL in this country have a terrible reputation, that there are balaclava-wielding thugs who have been involved in violence with the police. You don't want to get involved in giving a speech to them. You want to get involved in giving a speech to an interfaith conference where you can discuss such issues. Surely that would be about social harmony in this country. We don't need anyone yeah, else no, coming over here and creating disarmament. Inviting me. No interfaith conference is inviting me because they listen but to the why don't you, Have you done your research on EDL? Have you done your research on the EDL? Yeah, have you? The fact is well, I interviewed the leader for an hour and a half last week, so yes, probably more so than you have. <laughs> so, I mean, I, he was sitting right in front of me for 90 minutes yesterday. The, the, the EDL does not advocate violence and does not uh, engage in anything well, except it has some, it has, wait a minute, but it has, it has some very unsavory characters who claim to be members of it. And in the same way that you condemn uh, Islamic extremism, surely you should be condemning extremism within the EDL and having nothing to do with it. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm So very, why are you uh, speaking to them then? To know. Why do you keep interrupting me? You ask me a question. So why are you speaking answer. to them? The, the, I happen to know and have verified this with Tommy Robinson and Kevin Carroll that uh, these people that come in and give the Nazi salutes and have swastikas and all that, they are uh, oftentimes infiltrators who are trying to discredit the organization. They go in to get their picture taken somewhere. They're immediately expelled. There is no tolerance for that kind of behavior within the EDL. And so the, what we have is... A, a situation where these people are trumpeted by the media because you want to portray the EDL in a certain way. It's the same oh, thing. Oh, we're creating this, me. are we? I know that, uh, that, that I'm working for freedom and human rights and I'm constantly uh, uh, confronted by people like this uh, Nick Lowell from Hope Not Hate who plainly just fabricates this ad that we supposedly ran and then tries to make a case about it. And in his petition saying that we should be banned from the UK, he says we called all Muslim savages, which we never have. So the whole thing is based on lies. 